thank you for that wonderful jazzy prelude. Today's Jazz Sunday. So, uh, yeah, it will be hopefully a fun Sunday. <laughs> uh, but, but before we, hmm? A whole jazz month? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's September 1st. We can make a month of it for sure. Uh, a few announcements before we begin our service. We have um, several prayer concerns that we lift up, and um, we have, I know from the, uh, Pat will have some. Uh, announcements as well, but we lift up Mary Metcalf. We had a call yesterday that she was in the hospital with very bad back pains, and I don't have the latest today, so uh, that's, um, that's all I have. She's in Catholic and with bad back pains. So let's keep Mary Metcalf and her husband Steve in prayer. Uh, we lift up the photos who were missing, Margaret Monroe and so many others, um, and I know that Pat, you have announcements to lift up about your friends and family. So if you want to share, and I'll repeat for those that can't hear. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm Pat Elliott. Um, I found out Friday that my nephew, Rick Cahal, passed away with stomach cancer and he was 65 years old. So prayers for my two nieces, Linda and uh, Janice. Cow. And uh, found out today a friend that we play cards with, Marlene, her daughter had emergency sur surgery last night for a torn retina, and her name is Carol. So keep her in prayers. Good news, I got my suitcase back Friday, <laughs> but Holly had still not got her, so please keep her in prayers. <laughs> Went to Frankfurt, <laughs> so to recap there, the uh, prayers for um, Pat's nephew, Rick, who passed away um, just recently from stomach cancer. And we pray for his family, especially the nieces, Linda and Janice. And also for your Pat's friend, Marlene, whose daughter is having emergency surgery. And uh, cataract. Cataract. Mm -hmm. And uh, joy is that you got your suitcase back. Yes. So now you don't need to go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> I know there are other, other, other prayer concerns that we could lift up or joys. Well, if you look at the back of your bulletin, if you do receive a bulletin or, or get one as you come in, or if you've been reading the announcement, something that I want to bring up now and will continue to remind you uh, there is an Ironman triathlon. I think this is the first one in the Tri-Cities and will be Sunday, September 22nd. So what does that mean and why am I talking about it? No, I am not participating in the triathlon. <laughs> no worries there, that's not my thing. But there will be road closures that will affect uh, getting to church. Unless you live within this immediate area, you won't have a, a problem but most of us do not. So we will have issues. So what we decided at the board meeting, we talked about it and discussed it, uh, and I took uh, counsel from other churches that are affected as well. Uh, we will that day not have a physical presence on, here in person, but we will have an online option for you to click and do your worship at home. So I hope that that's something you can participate in. I did not make that decision lightly because I know how important it is for us to come together as a community of faith, but, um, but I know how difficult it would have been because of the road closures and the, um, the way that they have it set up so that there's a perimeter. G-Way is, is going to be totally messed up. So um, I say that now because I will keep repeating that for three weeks because I don't want anyone showing up here <laughs> on that day and wondering where is everybody? <laughs> so help me spread that word to others who come regularly. Um, other announcements are in the bulletin there. We will have a special meeting. Uh, the board will come together on Tuesday, September 10th at 4 p.m. to analyze path forward uh, as a congregation and everyone's invited to come and just be part of that conversation. So it's in uh, the bulletin there. I know that there are other announcements, but if you have a prayer concern, we lift up everyone 
that's currently in need of prayer, but if you have specific prayer concerns, please reach out to the office. Let me know, call me, text me, or send me an email as well. Um, let's take a moment and just greet each other and then remain standing for our opening song. has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us sing our opening song. this morning. Let us remember that God is with us now. There is no place where God is not. Wherever we go, there God is. Now and always God enfolds us with mercy. God is ready to hear when we call. Let us worship our wonderful and great God. Turn to God in prayer. <clears throat> oh God, we give you thanks for all your gifts to us, for daily food, for health, 
for family and friends, for each breath we take. We thank you for the opportunity to gather for worship. Our hearts are truly overwhelmed, O oh God, when we consider how you have entrusted us with so many blessings. May we be worthy of that trust, O oh Lord. And may we be bold enough and unafraid to live as fully and as richly as you want us to live. Help us, O oh God, as followers of Jesus, to multiply all that you have given us. Make us people who share in both word and deed all that you have given to us. We pray for the church gathered today, that it may encourage all of its members to discover and to develop and use their gifts. We pray for each person worshiping within this community today, whether online or in person, we pray that you may grant each one health and wholeness. We pray for those who are in need, who are feeling poor in body or in spirit. We pray for those oppressed and burdened. We pray for those who are lost, alone, or in despair. And we lift up each petition and prayer concern spoken today. Be with each family, with each situation. Make your presence known to them. We pray always for wisdom, for guidance, for strength for ourselves, and we pray for wisdom for all those in positions of power. As we raise these prayers to you also, we lift up the silent prayers of our hearts. Hear our prayers, O Lord. O oh God, guide us by your Spirit, and be with all those for whom we have prayed this morning. Help us to walk faithfully in the path of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning's scripture reading is from James, chapter 1, verses 19 through 24, 27, excuse me. Um, you must understand this, my beloved brothers and sisters. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. For human anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of, wisdom, of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in the mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty and persevere, being not hearers who forget but doers who act, they will, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The word of the Lord. Well, as I mentioned earlier, today is Jazz Sunday, and this is just a, such a wonderful opportunity because we have this wonderful musician playing for us today, and I thought, well, how can I use Stephanie's gifts and talents uh, outside of the postlude and prelude? And then I had this wonderful idea, well, why don't I make her part of the sermon? And she very graciously said, why not? Let's do it. So, so I have a question for you. Have you ever given any thought to how our faith is like music or specifically jazz music? 
Have you ever given any thought to that? Maybe, okay, I see a lot of no's. Well, maybe it's because I am a musician as well that I have given thought to this. Um, so let me start out with this wonderful quote that I came across, the great jazz saxophonist John Coltrane. Who's heard of John Coltrane? Yes, okay. He once wrote the following, or said the following, my goal is to live the truly religious life and express it in my music. If you live it, when you play, there's no problem because the music is part of the whole thing. My music is a spiritual expression of what I am, my faith, my knowledge, my being. John Coltrane said that. Did that does that surprise you that a jazz musician would have a depth of, of spirituality? Okay. For, for him, music wasn't just an abstract idea that lived only inside his instrument. In his case, the saxophone. Coltrane believed that his inner life could be expressed through his music. Now, the writer of the book of James would agree with John Coltrane. Faith is something to be expressed. It's something to be lived out through the actions of our lives. And we are the instruments that give expression to that faith. So imagine yourself as a saxophone, or if you prefer something else, tuba, trumpet. For faith to be real, it must move beyond the analytical to the practical, from the mind to the heart, to the hands, to the feet. For our faith to be real, according to James, it must result in deeds. Now, I think a jazz musician would put it this way. For jazz to be real, it must have that swing. Jazz is like that. You could analyze it all you want. But if you don't feel it, if you don't produce that jazzy sound, well, to quote Duke Ellington, it don't mean a thing. It don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing, right? That's a jazz standard that was written and arranged by Duke Ellington in 1931. And he first recorded it in 1932. Now, at some point in his long career, he wrote about that song, and he said it became famous because of this, and I quote, it was the expression of a sentiment which prevailed among jazz musicians at the time. The sentiment being that if it ain't got that swing, it doesn't mean a thing. Now, this song was probably the first time that that phrase, swing, came into the lexicon of jazz music. And this term was introduced into everyday language way before the swing era that became popular later in the 40s with the big bands. So Duke Ellington and his band played this song continuously over the years and recorded it numerous times. And I've asked Stephanie to play it for us today. So enjoy this rendition of it. Don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Hit it. and then there's the interpretation. Playing jazz requires technique, obviously, and, and an understanding of music theory that is the framework or, or the rules of music. So you must know the basics if you're going to play, like key signatures, 
Uh, what's the meter, the chord progression, is it major or minor, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if you're grounded in the basics of music theory, then you can think creatively. You can then think outside of that framework and express something original. And that's what we call improvisation. And jazz then often takes the basics, a simple tune, and makes it so much more by adding that swing, those elements that make it a jazzy tune. For example, imagine it this way. If I ask Stephanie to play a song in strict rhythm, no swing, no major seventh chords, no sixes either, syncopation, no, it would sound like this. heard some humming here and I know Pat and Lindsay were enjoying that song. Is that your song? <laughs> Fly Me to the Moon. Fly Me to the Moon. Uh, yes, it is. And that was pretty straightforward. Actually, I would say it was kind of boring. Sorry, Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> but if she took that same tune and jazzed it up, gave it some swing, what would it sound like? She was improvising, right? That same melody was there, but there was other things going on. She made it walk, she made, she had motion, right? Now for her to do that, Stephanie needs to understand the basics of music theory, right? Of course. And then rely on years of practice and technique. And then she's able now to improvise on this basic melody. Now, she has a talent, a unique talent. I can't say that you can practice, practice, practice. You might not play like her. <laughs> jazz and faith have something in common, and it's this. Jazz depends on that swing, that rhythm, the, the improvisation, that extra thing to make it jazz. It takes the basics and gives it motion. In fact, sometimes the bass is called a walking bass because you're moving the bass around the chord progression. And so it is with our faith. Our faith depends on more than just our beliefs. It depends on more than just the basic knowledge of our faith. Faith is taking those basics and giving them motion. It don't mean a thing if what we say we'll believe isn't backed up by what we do. Now, at the end of the first chapter of James that you heard read just a bit ago, we find this gem. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress. Meaning that religion that is pure and undefiled before God is taking care of others that need. Taking your faith and putting it in action to help others. True religion is, according to James, when belief and action meet. True religion is more than just offering lip service to the basics. It's putting our beliefs into everyday life. And that's the swing that Duke Ellington alludes to. If we find that swing in our faith, we can make a difference. If we truly practice our religion, not just as an inner belief, but as an outward expression of that belief. We are learning to improvise. 
We are learning to break out of our rigid religion that sits inside a box and moving it out into the world. In other words, faithful living requires faithful action. And what we do and what we say matters, especially if you call yourself Christian. The word religion comes from the Latin word religare, which means to bind. And eventually that word religion came to mean the practices, the rituals surrounding our system of faith. So how we pray or how we worship or if you kneel or don't kneel, if you cross yourself or don't, those are the rituals, the practices of different faith traditions. So the word religion itself is not a bad word. It's what it has become, unfortunately, what it conjures up for some people that has become the problem. Some people, unfortunately, look at the word religion and think unfavorably because they have had a bad experience. A lot of damage has been done in the name of God. Throughout history, religion has been used as a hammer to keep people in line. Religion has been turned into this box where it keeps out anything that does not fit in. The wrong beliefs, out. The wrong way to worship, out. The wrong clothes, out. The wrong lifestyle, out. I can go on and on and on. But in the name of religion that was kept in a box, much damage has been done. Think of it like that earlier example of music that was played in strict rhythm. And then in swing and jazz. Religion has become a rigid way to keep others in line through right beliefs at the expense of faith actions. This narrow view of religion has no swing, friends, has no swing at all. Now James, of course, in the Bible doesn't refer to swing. I don't think jazz was invented back then, but in his letter, he is concerned with religion that has lost the outward practice of one's inner beliefs. Orthodoxy, that's just a fancy word that means the doctrines and the beliefs that we embrace. And orthopraxy, which is another fancy word for action and practice, are two sides of a coin. Orthodoxy, orthopraxy. And you can't have one without the other. When we are grounded in our faith, our beliefs, our faith practice are in sync. Your actions reflect what is inside. And your lack of action also reflects what is inside. Like John Coltrane speaking of his music and his faith, they reflect each other words and deeds. And James puts it this way, be doers of the word, not just hearers of the word. In other words, our actions matter. Our words matter too. The way we treat the stranger in our midst, the coworker at our job, our neighbor next door, the person in the grocery store line, or the person trying to cut you off in traffic as you try to merge. <laughs> Everything you do must reflect Christ living in you. And that is faithful living. So grounded in our beliefs and in the knowledge of scripture, we are free then to live a life fully reflecting God's will for us. And that's the improvisation part. Every day you are faced with new, new situations. And how you handle those situations grounded in your beliefs, that's the improvisation. We leave behind the strict religiosity that is only concerned with outward appearances of faith. And then we learn to swing our faith and improvise our actions to meet the moment. There's a Cuban-American jazz trumpeter and pianist 
who has an amazing story, which I will just, I would love to go into at another time, but Arturo Sandoval, a Cuban-American jazz trumpeter and pianist, once said the following, Toca tu vida a través de la trompeta, which kind of translates to play your life through your instrument or blow your life through your horn. I don't know. It isn't an exact translation, but I interpret it to mean that for Sandoval, his instrument spoke for him. His instrument was the mouthpiece. In other words, the breath that blows through that trumpet, if you ever listen to him play, go on YouTube and watch some videos. The breath that blows through that trumpet is what will impact the sound that comes out and what those around him will hear. The instrument, the trumpet itself, isn't the music maker. It's the instrumentalist, the person that is playing the instrument. That's the one, that's the person who is responsible for the sound. And that's the case too with the piano. I could sit down, but I can't do what Stephanie did. <laughs> so how we choose to live our lives as followers of Jesus makes all the difference. We are the instruments we are the instruments that play the music of our faith. So friends, I leave you with this. Practice your faith as a musician practices their instrument. Practice your faith as a musician practices their instrument. And that means come to worship. Fellowship with other believers. Read the scriptures. Study them. Pray. Have devotional time. Find that glimmer of good that God is presenting to us every day. Make beautiful music through your faith and swing it then and give it some motion. Make the deeds and the faith inside connect. And then when you practice your faith, go and make a difference one person at a time. Remember, it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Do up, do up, do up. Amen. God has made every provision for our lives on this earth, giving not only enough in creation to keep us alive, but to give us life that is abundant and rich with possibilities. How do we respond to such graciousness and love? May it be offering not only by what we feel obligated to give, but what God's example has set for us and what God's spirit inspires in us the very first fruits, the very best of our lives and our labors. Let us pray. <clears throat> By your grace, O oh God, you have provided abundantly for us. 
May these offerings from that abundance bring forth fullness of life for your children here and around the world and for the sake of Christ our Lord. Amen. table, the Lord's Supper table. This table is open to all, open to those who confess Jesus as Lord, open to those who seek to follow Jesus, open to those who want to deepen their commitment to their faith, open to those who aren't sure, but know that they need a taste of what God offers. We all stand in need of God's grace and mercy. So come and fill your emptiness with the goodness that is offered here. Let us pray. Ever creating God, we are gathered in your name in this place of worship. Here at this table, be remembered always. You have spoken to us. You challenge us to see the world with new eyes. Gracious God, pour out your spirit upon this gathering as we eat and drink in fellowship with one another. May we be filled with hope. May the spirit moving among us in this place rejuvenate and empower us as we go out to live a life of love in the world. And we do this in Jesus' name. Amen. We remember that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread. And after he had given thanks, he broke it. And he shared with his disciples. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat and do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And after he had blessed it, he shared with his disciples. And he said, this is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And so here we gather once more, as we do every week, to partake of the bread and the cup, symbols of Jesus' sacrifice for us. So we invite you to come to the table of grace. Come through the center aisle, return through the side aisles, and partake of gluten-free crackers and juice. All are welcome to the table.
together our closing prayer. Most gracious God, we praise you for what you have given and for what you have promised us here. You have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. You have fed us with the bread of life and renewed us for your service. Now we give ourselves to you and we ask that our daily living may be part of the life of your kingdom and that our love may be your love reaching out into the life of the world. Through Jesus Christ, amen. Please stand as you are able as we sing our final hymn, I'm Going to Live So God Can Use Me. I don't know if this is very familiar, so I've asked Stephanie to play it once through. <laughs> catch up with each other and, and greet each other. Um, I want to thank Stephanie once more. She was just on board with anything I threw at her today. So <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. And now may the deep peace of Christ be with you. May the strong arms of God sustain you. And may the power of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.